ցուցյան եւ ծանր բահերին քեզեմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. It's the cornerstone to our faith. And that faith comes together inside of a structure, which is of course the church, the Christian church. And therefore uh, St. Paul talks about it and Jesus himself. He said I establish my church And guess what? He says, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What does that mean? It means that nothing can destroy his church. One of the beautiful sharagans that we have, hymns of the church, includes the phrase, Takavor yerknavor zegeretit ko ansharj bahia. Eternal king, keep your church immovable. And we pray this with pride in fact one of the churches has put it on their altar too unfortunately when we talk about being unshakable we've got a different idea don't we what christ is talking about is the solidness of the church what we talk about is hey look at our structure it's not about structure it's not even about people as i shared with you a couple weeks ago we were talking about that in on the, in the context of pentecost this has gotten us into trouble not only the armenian church but all churches we start thinking that it's people that make up the church that's beautiful that's a beautiful saying in fact it's a nice yeah, well, it's a nice it's a nice little slogan it's the people it's not the building it's the people that's very cute but it's not the people it's the people who are focused around christ That's what the church is. Without Christ in the center you have a very nice group of people. You can have a thousand people, a million people if Christ is not in the center, you have a million people. But what does Christ say? He says where two of you are gathered in my name, I'm there. So, it's the gathering of people with Christ in the center that becomes the church. That becomes the body of Christ. And this is what happened to us in the in the Armenian church back in well back in the early times no not as far not when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth now this is actually in 301 this is at the beginning of the 4th century when St Gregory the Illuminator converted the king of Armenia Durtad and today I'm mentioning that because today is the feast of Etchmiadzin It is the feast of the Armenian Church, the feast of the mother church Etchmiadzin. After the conversion of Saint Dirtad, the, the king at that time, he was a heathen, he had gotten into all kinds of difficulties, chasing a woman named Hrepsimet, chasing uh, after them, killing them, and then just a bizarre bizarre group of events that led up to him becoming sick, and then Saint Gregory the Illuminating cure, curing him, and then Dirtad making this proclamation that Christianity would be the 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 religion of Armenia, and hence we've got that beautiful saying that Armenia is the first Christian nation. We love saying that. Now the challenge is for us to be worthy of being that first Christian nation. And so it's important for us to understand in what context that comes. Well, one of the stories that puts it in context is the story of Etchmiadzin. Right after the conversion of King Dirtad, St. Gregory sees this this vision, a dreamlike thing. And he sees that Jesus Christ descends from heaven with a with a mallet in his hand and he points to four corners where his church would be built in Armenia it's in the city of Var Shabad inside that city Jesus comes and says this is where you will build the church of the Armenian people and this is where in fact if you go to Armenia right now you will see that marking it's called the Ichman Seran the 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 table at which Christ came down it's the altar in the center of the city of Var Shabad in a in a shrine in a very special cathedral in the first Armenian Christian church 
etchmiadzin. In fact, the word etchmiadzin is descriptive of St. Gregory's vision. Etch means to descend. Miadzin means the only begotten, namely Jesus Christ. The descent of Christ. Etch miadzin, the descent of the only begotten. And this is where the church of the Armenian people would be built. And he built it. And 303, just two years later, this, this shrine today that we go there and we offer our prayers, was built and it stands until today as a, as a symbol of faith. Now, that is a building. You're right. It's just a building. It's just stones on top of each other. It's the people that come inside of it. Those are important too. But what's really important is that the center of that building is a faith in Jesus Christ. And if you take that out, none of this really matters. It becomes just a building, not even a church. But for it to become a church means that Christ has to be there. And so thank God that we've got people who come together and our prayers and our sharagans, we, uh, our, our hymns, the divine liturgy. Every Sunday that we turn and we turn to the people with the Holy Eucharist, with the Holy Communion, we say, This is life. This is hope. This is resurrection. We present Christ to the people. What are we saying? In the center of our church is Jesus Christ. That's very important for us to focus in on that, especially in, in dates like this, like the Feast of Holy Etchmiazin, give us an opportunity really to think about that. Now we should be thinking about that constantly. We should, every time we walk into an Armenian church, every Armenian church is a replica of Etchmiazin. Every Armenian church. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about the domes, I'm not talking about the cross, I'm not even talking about the altar tables. It's a replica of Etchmiadzin because there is Christ. The Christ child has descended. That's where the descent of the only begotten is. In every Armenian church, we, we focus in on Christ being at the center. And that's what makes a, a church not a building. From a building, it turns into a church when Christ is in the middle. Now, I say this because it's very important for us to really have this very solid in our head. Because a lot of times when we talk about the church, we talk about all kinds of the peripheral stuff. And I'm not just talking about the bazaars and the bingos and the dinners, but I'm talking about some of the peripheral stuff that take place even in the church. You've got candles. I went to church and I lit a candle. Oh, I love going to church because I love the smell of the incense. You know, I see the smoke going up. Every one of these things has as its point, it, it, every one of these things points to Christ. The other day on Facebook, I saw a very interesting, one of the, one of the young girls had posted a small little a picture of herself in front of one of the monasteries in Armenia. Then I saw another clip of somebody had gotten a cool little iPhone uh, cover and it had Hotchkot on there. It was beautiful. And the, the girl who had put a post of herself in front of one of the monasteries, she says, this is so peaceful. I love being here. This is a, one of the most beautiful places. Now, do you know that that monastery was built not for a photo op? It was built to bring praise to God. It was built because the people in that town had a faith in Jesus Christ. On the iPhone cover, there is a chachkar. The chachkar is not there, so it could be on your cigarette lighter, it could be on, on your car, on your windshield, on your iPhone. The chachkar was a dedication to God with Christ in the center. And I'm not condemning any of these practices. That's beautiful, that you want to that you wanna show off the treasures of your people. But don't forget that at the center of those treasures is Jesus Christ. And when Christ is missing from it, then it's just a decoration. Then it's just another building. It's just another matchbox cover. No, these things are there because they point to Jesus Christ. And this is where the challenge comes for us as Armenian Christians today. For us, if we're going to take our, our faith seriously, and which we should, 
because by all indications, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Maya Angelou passed away and it gave us all an opportunity to look at this beautiful lady and her work that she dedicated. It was all based on a very simple faith of knowing that that church is the centerpiece where Christ lives, where God's presence can be absorbed. And you know what, when I saw that, I said, you know what, God, God bless the memory of Maya Angelou, but you know what, God bless also the memory of all those people who built those big shrines, who made those chachkars. And now, are we worthy of it? We are when we look at it and we see the presence of Christ inside each of these. Now, I want to throw that out as a challenge, especially today on the Feast of Etchmiadzin. A challenge to all of you, our listeners, Armenian Christianity today. What does that mean to be a Christian today, an Armenian Christian? It begins with Etchmiadzin, to realize that the focal point of Etchmiadzin is Jesus Christ. And when Christ is in the center, then you start doing the miracles of healing the king dirtat, of proclaiming Christianity as the salvation of your life, of infecting the rest of the population with a very simple concept of love, respect, understanding, harmony, and ultimately peace. It begins with us accepting Christ as the center of, of our faith and our church. Let's take that challenge. Let's make it work. Let's look at those beautiful places that we have as Armenians, those beautiful structures, and say, God bless those places because Christ is there, and we were the ones who reacted to it, and today I'm going to react to it. All the other things, their peripherals, the smoke, the, the lights, the candles, those are great things, but they all point to the one who's in the middle. We're going to be talking more about this in the coming weeks. For today, I want to throw this out as a challenge for meditation today, for you to think about this beautiful thing. What does it mean that Christ has descended? Etch miyazin. May God bless you. I look forward to being with you again next week. Until then, I want to remind you to give praise and glory always to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.